Hey guys, my name is Benjamin Salmon. I'm one of the co-founders of Digital Salmon and I created Fade for the Unity Asset Store. Today, I'd like to introduce you to the package and to help you new users get set up. So the first thing you want to do is import the package from the Unity Asset Store, navigate to Assets, Fade, Examples, and open up one of the example scenes. The first one I'd suggest you open is the effect reel. Pressing play in the effect reel will play through each of the effects included out of the box in sequential order with their name appearing in the bottom left. From here, you could choose an effect that you liked out of the box or find one that's pretty close to what you want that you might be able to modify. In the effect real scene, what will happen is the fade in will happen, the world will change and then fade out. This is useful for things like virtual tours or narrative systems where you won't actually be changing scene between different fades. If you want to see a scene switch, select either the example scene cube or the example scene sphere Open them up, press play, and pressing spacebar will transition between the two scenes. And now I'm on sphere, and pressing it again will take me back to cube. So how does it all work? Well, let's start from the ground up. It's really easy to integrate fade into your project. Pick your camera, add a fade post-process component to it, and choose the default fade effect. You'll be able to change the fade effect that's applied using other scripts or using your own code, but choosing a default one makes things easier. So let's go with zoom. The next thing you need to select is your effect easing. If you're not familiar with what easing is, I would suggest a linear easing curve like this one you should have out default. I'm personally a big fan of the S curve. Pressing the preview button and dragging up the preview alpha percentage will show you your effect in the scene view. This is useful when modifying effects or when creating your own. At the bottom, you'll see an effect material editor that allows you to edit the fade effect. Now bear in mind that when you're editing in the post-process view, you are editing the source asset, not a copy of it. So you will be modifying the default effect. If you want to create your own effects, just go in, pick an effect that's pretty close to the one you want and press Control D. That will duplicate your effect. Then just rename it. Let's call it Zoom Custom. Modify your effect name or your zoom anchor or your strength or whatever other parameters you find on that shader and apply it to your camera. I'm going to stick with Zoom for now and press play. You'll notice nothing happens. That's because there's no code telling the fade effect to kick in. So let's add a component, fade on start. Drag the post process into the post process parameter and press play. Now the scene opens with a zoom. And how do we get out the scene? If we add a scene switch, drag in the fade post process, pick a key, I'm going to say spacebar, and then choose a level name. I'm going to grab the name from there. And now, pressing the space bar, will transition out of my scene and into the other one. If you want to understand how to call fade from your own code, just open up any of these scripts and it's really straightforward. The fade post process component is responsible for applying the post process effect. The three methods you might want to call on it are dip, which will fade down then back up, fade down and fade up. There are three useful events on the component, faded up, faded down, and effect changed. These can be used to make sure things happen once a scene has faded or during a dip. In addition, if you're more comfortable with lambdas or actions, you can use the onComplete parameter of the fade down and the fade up method calls. There's another public method on there called assign effect, which you can use to assign a different fade effect at runtime. If you navigate to Fade Effects, you'll see the library of effects that are included out of the box. To give you a quick introduction to a Fade Effect, it's effectively a pointer to a shader and then a set of parameters. So if you scroll between the different effects, you'll see that their shaders are changing. And if you look in the Shaders folder, you'll see some of the shaders that are included out of the box. If you want to modify an effect, as we mentioned earlier, you'll want to duplicate the asset, rename it, and then change the shader parameters. If you want to create one of your own, just duplicate one of our shaders and modify it. The important thing to note is that every fade effect shader requires these three properties at the top and uses the delta uniform in order to pass in a zero to one range of how much the effect should be taking place. It's important that when the effect is at one, then the effect is fully covering the screen with the base color. And when it's at zero, it's fully showing the scene. Uh, this is important so that you can chain different effects with each other. We think we filled the package with lots of useful effects and we covered most of the bases. But if you think we're missing one of the really useful transitions that you've come up with and other users might benefit from it, then let us know and we'll try and include it in one of the updates. 
Thanks for your time and good luck using Fade.